Welcome back, all you math fans. We're going to be talking about the Nash Equilibrium and its group W, as you guys all know. Hi, I'm Kristen. Hi, this is Jian Kwan, but you guys can call me Zhang. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Shira. I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Taksha, and I will be talking to you about economics in general. Economics studies the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. There are two types of economics. Micro and macro. Macroeconomics deals with the economy as a whole, and microeconomics deals with the intertwinings of the economy itself. Scarcity is the most used principle of economics. People have unlimited wants, but they have limited resources. So they have to decide on what resources to use and which ones are most important. Macroeconomics deals with charts and equations about governmental policy. Microeconomics deals with simple factors and effects of one's decisions. Nash equilibrium falls under microeconomics. Game theory is a study of mathematical model of strategic interaction between rational decision makers. Originally, it addressed the zero-sum games in which one person's gain results in losses for the other participants. Today, game theory applies to a wide range of behavioral relations and is now an ambular uh, term for the science of logical decision making in humans, animals, and even computers. The key to game theory is that the payoff of one player in the game is contingent on the strategy that the other player of the game decides to attempt. The main parts that come into play with game theory include a player preference, identities, as well as uh, strategies and uh, how they could each affect the outcome of the game. The most uh, common type of the game theory are cooperative game and uh, non-cooperative game. Cooperative game theory is about how a cooperative group of people interact when they only know what the payoff is going to be. Non-cooperative game theory involves how a group of people deal with one another in order to achieve the best outcome for their own goals. The most common type of non-cooperative game is a strategy game. In a strategy game, the only things that are listed to the players are the strategies available and the possible outcomes as a result of the combination of choices. That are listed, the payoffs of the players is called their utility and the higher utility of player, the best of an outcome they receive. A big figure in the history of game theory is a man by the name of John Nash. John Nash was a famous mathematician and economist. He started as a chemical engineering major at Carnegie Institute of Technology and later switched to a chemistry major, then finally a mathematics major. He graduated at the age of 20 with both his bachelor's degree and his master's degree. After getting his PhD at Princeton, he became a professor at MIT. From ages 22 to 25, he wrote multiple papers related to game theory and in 1994, won the Nobel Prize for the paper he wrote at the age of 22 which was when he first wrote about the self-named Nash Equilibrium. Now, according to Investopedia, Nash Equilibrium is a concept within the idea of game theory that no players will deviate from their initial strategy and it will result in the optimum outcome of a game. This concept preaches the idea that an individual receives no incremental benefits if they decide to stray from their main action, given that none of the other players in the game decide to change their action. You can end up having zero, one, or multiple Nash equilibria within any game that it is used for. There's a wide range of in terms of the disciplines that Nash equilibrium can be used for, from mathematics and economics to the social sciences. A classic example of the Nash equilibrium is the Prisoner's Dilemma. Prisoner's Dilemma is a simultaneous game played by two players that goes as follows. Two criminals are suspected of committing a crime together. They are arrested and put into two different interrogation rooms. The police officers interrogating them gives them the following options. If both criminals confess to the crime, then they both get 10 years in prison. If neither confess to the crime, then they both get 3 years in prison. If one confesses to the crime and the other does not, then the one who confesses gets 1 year in prison, and the one who does not gets 25 years in prison.
and the prisoner can communicate with the other so they do not know what the other would do. How do we evaluate what we think each prisoner would do? We do their best response analysis. We first look at prisoner A. If prisoner A assumes that prisoner B will confess, he can either confess and get 10 years in prison or deny and get 25 years in prison. We see that his best response if he thinks B will confess is to also confess. If A assumes that B will deny, then he can either confess and get one year in prison or deny and get three. Therefore, his best response if he assumes B will deny is to confess. Therefore, we see that no matter what prisoner B does, prisoner A best response is to confess. This is called a dominant strategy. Similarly, we can do the same analysis to prisoner B and see that he also has a dominant strategy of confessing. Therefore, we can predict that both players will confess, meaning that the Nash equilibrium will be both prisoner A and prisoner B will confess. We can see this is a Nash equilibrium, since if the either player switch his strategy to deny, they will end up with more jail time. There are many real-world examples of finding Nash equilibrium in prisoner dilemma games, such as deciding how much advertising money two competing firms should spend, setting the prices of products, or deciding whether or not to stick to an agreed-upon contract. An example of this is deciding whether or not to continue nuclear weapon production during the Cold War. It is important to make sure the payoffs are correct. For example, in our previous example with prisoners A and B, the results change if the prisoners care about each other. If they are husband and wife, having your partner in prison may be just as bad as you being in prison. We can see this change in the new table. Doing best response analysis on this, we see that there are now two Nash equilibrium, both confessing and both denying. How do we decide which choice we believe the husband and wife will make? The way we go about this is by finding what we could consider to be the focal point also known as a shelling point after economist Thomas Shelling. The focal point is where each player assumptions lead them. If the husband and the wife know that both denying will lead to the better outcome, and both know that the other knows that denying will lead to the better outcome, then the focal point here would be the both denying. Now I will be talking about the zero-sum game. Now, most of us will not have an experience in our lives that involves us going to jail with our buddies. But did you know a popular game in our childhoods is a coordination game? This popular game is rock, paper, scissors. This game is an example of the zero-sum game, which we mentioned earlier. Being a zero-sum game, one player wins when the other loses, and no points are added when there is a stalemate. Take a look at the following chart. This is shown through the win-lose and draw factors. The left diagonal on the chart only contains zeros because player 1 and player 2 pick the same move. Whenever there is a 1, that means a person with the color has won. The reverse is true when you look at the negative ones. As opposed to the prisoner's dilemma example, this game doesn't have a better chance depending on the particular choice you make. So in prisoner's dilemma, the best choice for you is to confess because you have a better outcome because the other person's in trouble and not you. But there's no way that you can not avoid jail if you confess for either player. And for rock, paper, scissors, it is not as clean cut. Either you choose rock, paper, or scissors, but it depends on the other person and what they choose. So what the Nash equilibrium says is go completely random. So if this happens, in theory, then you will win a third of the time, you will lose a third of the time, and you will draw a third of the time. And there is no way to guarantee a better likelihood of winning against every player that you go against. So choosing randomly is the most rational option, where the player could not change their choice, or would not change their choice, if they perform it correctly. And last but not least, we wanted to put up our media suggestion of the week, and if we miss it, we will put up another video. So, our suggestion of the week is A Beautiful Mind, and it stars Russell Crowe, and it's about the life of John Nash. Here it is.
Thank you. I've always believed in numbers, in the equations and logics that lead to reason. But after a lifetime of such pursuits, I ask, what truly is logic? Who decides reason? My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, and back. And I have made the most important discovery of my career. The most important discovery of my life. It is only in the mysterious equations of love that any logical reasons can be found. I'm only here tonight because of you. You are the reason I am. <laughs> you are all my reasons. <laughs> <laughs>